Welcome to the Men's to Women podcast. I'm Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. Russell Clay at Russell J. Clay with me. Breaking down this five-game Tuesday slate tonight. And looks like a chalky one, but all five games are definitely in play tonight. And I'm kind of excited about a short slate now. Yeah, no, this is, this is going to be an interesting one because it's kind of like, do I go chalk um, or do I sort of mix things up a little bit? Yeah, it's a tough call tonight because now with the Dwight Howard news of him being suspended, uh, that puts Harden into kind of that must-play range in cash just because of his dominance without Howard, as we've seen, you know, kind of lately when Howard's fouled out with the ankle injury because right. Howard, Harden's been dominant. When when you look at Harden's splits without Howard, it's not actually the scoring. The scoring pretty much stays the same. It's all the other things, the rebounds and assists and, and even steals. Um, he's even averaging like – a half more steals a game with without Howard. So those are the types of things you kind of get that consistency. So it's going to be hard to fade him tonight, but Jason is going to do his best to uh, try to sell you on it tonight. Uh, in GPPs, I think it is worth the look yeah. to fade Harden. Just yeah. because, I mean, before before I saw the, Harden, or the Howard news, I was kind of off Harden a little bit tonight because it is a tough matchup. I mean, Miami's allowed the second fewest fantasy points per game to opposing shooting guards this season. So I wasn't going to pay off that price tag. But now, with all those peripheral stats that you mentioned that go up, um, we've seen it in the past. It just He kind of puts all, all around that triple-double game without Howard. Mm-hmm. So it is scary, but... I think I'm going to do that in some GPPs tonight. And and don't be confused about his ownership percentage. It's going to be very, very high in all formats tonight. So that's that's sort of another selling point on potentially not all-out fading, um, but there's some options. Yeah, yeah, there definitely is. Looking over Vegas lines, I mean, the only blowout concern is Phoenix and Toronto tonight. Uh, Toronto's right. nine-and-a-half favorites, um, but they were favorites against Denver I thought Toronto was going to kind of run away with that game, but the Nuggets crushed them. So I'm not not too sure what to expect, but Phoenix is one of the worst defenses in the league. So um, I think that's the only real blowout concern tonight, but it's not one that I'm fading. Yeah, if everything goes according to plan, this should be a blowout. Um, Phoenix just doesn't really have the horses to compete with a good team, especially defensively like Toronto, but... Um, I mean, we've seen weird games. The Spurs last night, they were supposed to dominate, and and poor Boban barely got any minutes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, um, I mean, the NBA is weird sometimes. But if everything goes according to plan, this this is a blowout concern. Yeah. Um, I mean, all five games are definitely in play tonight. I think the Suns are the only team that I'm not going to play tonight uh, on right. any circumstances because that 95 total, um, the lowest of the slate. But – um, if you're looking at other games, I mean, New York and Boston, they've been shootouts in the past, um, and it looks that way tonight because that, that game is the highest total, and it looks like it could be the highest pace game tonight. Yeah, no, there's some fun options here, especially in the um, the mid-range that you're looking at in this yeah. game. I, I wouldn't be afraid um, of the pace of this game or anything like that. I think I think that's a nice game to target. Yeah, and obviously Houston-Miami, 205 total. Yeah, um, you look at the Bucks, Bucks and Blazers, two hundred five, Lakers, Wolves, two hundred four. So every game's kind of in play tonight. I think the Suns are the only odd man out for teams um, when mm-hmm. choosing players. Yeah, no, and that Houston Miami game. Um, as I, I I was talking to Jason before the show, you're gonna know pretty quickly if you ran into a brick wall playing um, Houston heavy against a, a tough Miami defense. But I, I think on the five game slate, it's it's kind of kind of worth it. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of looking at those mid-range guys like Ariza who have picked things up and trying to find that value in the front court with Howard out, but it's kind of a high-risk, high-reward tonight. Yeah, it's higher risk than you'd think because it's it's Houston, but um, yeah, Miami's legit. Uh, looking at point guards, looking at injuries, not too much tonight. Um, Brendan Knight's been questionable, been out um, for some time now. That just means Archie Goodwin. Uh, step into a bigger role. Doesn't look like Brand Knight's going to come back tonight, um, although they are back from the road trip that he was ruled out on. It's just going to be more Archie Goodwin, more Devin Booker, but as we mentioned, we're not really on those plays. Yeah, it's going to be tough to play them against Toronto. Um, that's just a solid defense. So, And Phoenix really isn't that talented. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, Jose Calderon, um, 
took pra- took part in practice Monday. Uh, optimistic to return today against Boston. Yeah. Um, that just means Langston Galloway. Langston Galloway. Yeah. And it, it's a tough matchup anyway against Boston. Uh, that back that court uh, defense is pretty pretty stout. So uh, stay away from that situation anyway. If you're looking at top plays, um, I love Kyle Lowry tonight. If you're paying up. Pretty clear, you know, easy matchup against Phoenix. They've lost the second most points to opposing point cards this season. After the dud last night, um, I'm, yeah. I'm not hesitant in coming back. No, I wouldn't be afraid of that. And um, also, I think when you when you debate between Lillard and Lowry, um, I, I think Lowry, if you're paying up that point guard, it, it's clearly Lowry. Um, I, I think you can pretty much ignore last night when when sort of evaluating tonight. Yeah, you just got to have a short memory and things like this. And as you mentioned, I mean, that debate between Lowry and Lauer, I think Lowry definitely has the edge. Mm-hmm. Just in a higher pace game and also a better matchup um, and just a little bit cheaper. And I, I do like Isaiah Thomas tonight. Um, he's an interesting sort of middle to high end middle range option. But I, I still like Lowry. If you're, if you're going to pay that, I kind of just want to bump it up to Lowry. Yeah. So. I mean, the, the price discount on DK is not that – it's a – Pretty decent difference. I mean, twelve hundred. Um, yeah. But yeah, Fanduel. I mean, you're kind of creeping in a similar price range there. But um, I mean, I'm definitely on Thomas today. I like him a lot in tournaments. Um, the Knicks have been really bad against point guards of late. Um, they're allowing the most fancy points per game. It's by a wide margin of late in the last ten games. So um, Thomas, kind of your sneaky contrarian play tonight. Yeah, and Calderon coming back definitely yeah. isn't a worry uh, defense defense wise. So yeah. yeah. Uh, look at other popular plays. Obviously, Ricky Rubio against the Lakers is going to be a popular one. Yeah. Um, I mean, the guys, he's averaged 16, uh, 5, and 13 against L.A. this season, two games. So, um, And he's got a great price tag. I just think he's – I mean, points per dollar, probably your best point guard play tonight outside of Lowry, but those two are definitely one, two. Yeah, Rubio I, – I actually think Rubio has 40-point uh, upside tonight. I mean, it, it's a pretty easy matchup, and he's he's shown that upside on some occasions recently. So 6500 is a nice, a nice price. I think he's a pretty safe cash option as well. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, both formats, he's, he's a great play. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at cheaper guys, Marcus Smart, um, been really solid of late, averaging 13 13- – Three and two over the last six games, starting to play more minutes. Um, could see more of a bump tonight if Jay Crowder sits. You're going to see guys like Evan Turner and, and Smart come off the bench a little bit more and pick up a few more minutes than usual. Yeah, Jay, Jay Crowder's a pretty big injury tonight because he has a lot of sort of production in general that would be spread out across that whole Celtics team. So um, that's that's an injury to watch. Um, Smart and Levine are intriguing to me tonight, and they're both relatively – they're both priced similarly, so I'm looking at those two guys. If you're if you're looking to pay down a little bit, yeah, I mean Levine definitely. Well, I don't know. I mean Smart, we've seen have some upside of late, but I think Levine is yeah. more your higher upside play in this matchup. But mm-hmm. definitely both are decent at that price. Yeah, and and I mean I, I I don't see any options below that that sort of even come close to having that type of um ceiling and floor so i think that's probably the lowest you want to go tonight yeah i mean like you mentioned with the houston guys i mean patrick beverly been playing really well um coming off back-to-back 30 dk point games tougher matchup against you know miami but uh at that price i mean it's kind of high risk high reward yeah no he's definitely in play um i i do like those other options more but if you're looking to free up some cap yeah he's pretty good he's just in that next tier down Right. Muro to shooting guard. Um, as always, Kobe Bryant, we're always waiting on him. Uh, considered questionable tonight. That just means Lou Williams uh, gets his usual minutes, but Jordan Clarkson um, kind of steps into a bigger role because clearly Byron Scott is not ready to give D'Angelo Russell the keys to the car yet. Um, yeah. So it, it just means more Jordan Clarkson if Kobe sits. Which, it's a sad sight to see, kind of, Russell. I mean, you heard him come out the other day saying he doesn't really even know, like, what he's doing out there, and he's just not getting any help. So, yeah, that's kind of a situation to avoid for at least the next few games or so. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only real injury concern at shooting guard tonight, so we can jump right to talking about what we're going to do at shooting guard. And um, I mean, it's it's obviously hard in cash. I mean, there's no way around it. Um, No. 
I mean, he's going to be high, highly owned. So even if he does maybe just have a 50 fantasy point game, he's also going to have a 50 fantasy point game for your opponent. Um, right. You're not, you're not fading him in cash. No, you can't. The, the risk is too high. He's going to be 80% owned in cash, maybe even more. He should be 95 at the most. Yeah. Maybe 5% of those people who just forgot to set their lineups. All right. Know. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he's going to – there's no reason to fade him in cash. Um you look down, and and I actually think even though most nights point or shooting guards are, are one to avoid, but I, I kind of like DeRozan and Wade tonight, even even though they're a little pricier than than some of the cheaper guys. But yeah, I really like paying up, and I think teaming Harden with with one of those players is an interesting option as well. Yeah, I mean, if you kind of go and, and look at that Houston game, and maybe it is high scoring goes back and forth. Obviously, Wade and Harden are going to be the guys to do it. So. Um, I mean, that could be a really high upside duo because yeah. I, mean, I, I really loved Wade in this matchup beforehand. Um, he obviously has a better matchup compared to Wade or uh, compared to Harden. And he's been playing great basketball, um, yeah. averaging over 20 points in the last five games and kind of doing it all as well, getting the assist and rebound numbers up as well. Right. Yeah, no, he's a great play. Um, probably staying away from Middleton tonight. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> like Wade, it it just Wade is is so close to his price. It doesn't really make sense unless you're trying to be really contrarian. But even then, it's kind of like if you're paying up, I I would just go with Wade. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you're just trying to, be, you're maybe playing multiple lineups and trying to be right. really different. Maybe Middleton slips in because the matchup he does have a great matchup against Portland, um, who have struggled against shooting guards, but we obviously saw the Kings struggle. Against yeah. <laughs> Middleton just looked completely lost out there. So, yeah. um, I mean, creeping any lower, it gets really tough. Um, not a lot of great matchups tonight for a lot of these guys. And um, as we mentioned, if uh, Jay Crowder does sit, you're going to see Evan Turner get a, a bump in mitts, who has been kind of been playing quietly well over the last six games, uh, averaging 12, 3, and 5, uh, right around 26 DK points per game. Um, so maybe you see him creep into the 30s for minutes tonight. Yeah, and that and that could be a really good value um, if Crowder sits, like you mentioned. So that's an interesting guy to look at if you need like a utility spot or want to team him with Harden or something like that. Yeah, because I mean he is small forward on Fanduel, but he is a shooting guard um, on DK. So I, I kind of like him more on Fanduel where you have to roster a second small forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I know we disagree on Andrew Wiggins tonight. I, I think it's an interesting matchup against the Lakers. Um, I think they're 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 pretty easy to to get like beat up athletically. So I, I think he could have a, a random peripheral stat night. Um. <laughs> it's it's very rare. I mean, it is very rare when he goes for peripheral stats, but yeah, no, I know. Um, but I, he's not obviously he's not as good of an option as the other top guys. Yeah. But I, I think he's an interesting upside play um, on DraftKings tonight. Yeah, I mean, I can see that. I mean, you look at he's pretty good difference from the top options price wise, and obviously in that total in that game against LA. I mean, you like anyone against LA, but. It's yeah. I mean, I can't disagree. It's a great matchup for him, but oh god. And I agree <laughs> that most likely um, he's not going to get those rebounds and assists for whatever reason. I still can't figure that out. Um, yeah. But but I don't know. I think a lot of people are going to be on Towns and and Gorgie, and I think he's a nice hedge, sort of off that. Yeah, I mean, deservingly so. I mean, Towns and yeah, absolutely. Wiggins is your more contrarian option from that mm-hmm. that team. We were a small forward. Uh, we talked about Jay Crowder. Um, luckily, that that's the first game of the night, so he did miss practice. Right. Um, so you're going to find out, you know, within reasonable time, hopefully before the game, before the slate locks. So um, Evan Turner, Marcus Smart, they would all get some some decent bumps uh, for minutes. But um, looking elsewhere, I mean, TJ yeah. Warren, uh, he's your only other guy um, who's questionable tonight. That just means PJ Tucker sees a ton of minutes, but. Tucker is one of the worst fancy points per minute players I've ever seen. <laughs> I really, I can't believe it. Plays 42 minutes against Dallas and gets 10 DraftKings points. I just he, can't. He, he's fighting with Doug McDermott right now. They're in a skirmish. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. But we're not talking about Phoenix players. We're not talking about them at all. Um, yeah. We're, we're done with them. Yeah. For now. Yeah. Uh, um, look at small forward. 
Carmel Anthony, I think he's your obvious top option if you're paying up. Yeah. Um, and I think you kind of have to a little bit here, even if you're paying up for Harden, because you don't feel good about a lot of these mid-range guys. No. And, and yeah, like you said, it's light tonight. Um, there's, like, a few other options, but it's th- there's no one even close um, at this position. And he's at home against Boston. Um, I, I think – I think he could score 30 points tonight, um, and and that's that's a good matchup for, for this five-game slate. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you mentioned, it's a nice matchup against Boston. They've struggled against small forwards this season, and I mean, Melo's kind of dominated them this, this year. Um, he went 29-10-4 and four in the first matchup, and then in just 17 minutes in the second, he went 17-4-3 and three before leaving with an ankle injury. So, um, and you've got to think, I mean, if Jake Crowder sits tonight, that just ups Mello, yeah. the Mello play even more. It's just a better matchup against Turner. So, um, I mean, the guy scored 40-plus fantasy points in six of the last 10 games, and you're getting it at a discount um, kind of, you know, from what we're usually paying up for at small forward. Right, and I think he can fit um, either in high-end lineups or or balanced lineups tonight. So he's kind of in that range where it, it, it doesn't kill you, um, his salary. So, yeah, definitely an interesting option. Yeah. Um, you, you like Trevor Reza as like the secondary option from that Houston game and on the Houston side. I, I definitely don't mind it. It's just because small forward's a weaker spot tonight. And Miami hasn't been great against small forwards, but they're not an elite matchup for him. Um, I do think you see kind of Harden and him take over more of the offensive role tonight. Right. Yeah, no. And, and again, um, I'm leading you into this, this Houston matchup. With, with my sword up, and we might run into a brick wall within five minutes, but I, I think I think it's a decent matchup tonight. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not bad. I think, obviously, I mean, if you're picking one of the two, I mean, if you're picking solely based off matchup, Ariza would have the better one. And, uh, and Ariza is another, another guy, when, when Howard's out, all of his numbers sort of bump up. So, yeah, um, yeah that's kind of what you're looking at there. And the steals have been there, which is always a nice part of Ariza's game of late. Um, I mean, the guy has you know, 11 in the last four games against some pretty decent opponents. So mm-hmm. that kind of, his peripheral stats kind of give him a little bit of a higher floor. So right. that's always nice. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at other cheaper options, Alfred Camino starting to play bigger minutes from where we said he'd play the last game against Charlotte. Saw 32 and 31 after playing 24 and 21 in the previous two games. Um, he's kind of your decent mid-range value guy tonight. A little bit cheaper than Ariza. Not a bad matchup against the Bucks. We're coming off a of back-to-back, so um, I do like him as a nice, deeper value option. Yeah, I, obviously we don't think he's going to have that 39 fantasy point upside yeah. that he had the other night, but it does show that, hey, he does have that potential. So um, that's that's an interesting option. Yeah, I mean, because usually he kind of sits in that 22 to 25 uh, fantasy point range when – He's not scoring, you know, so which is always nice because he does have the peripheral. He does rebound. His defensive stats are always there. So I do like that against this Milwaukee team. He kind of fits along well because they're going to need his length out there uh, against these guys. So um, he's definitely in play for value because there's not much lower I like. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's the tough thing about tonight. Yeah. Um, you look at other options here. Shabazz Muhammad. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. after a nice stretch of playing – Solid yeah. minutes. He went back down to 13 and then scored minus one. <laughs> yeah. Him, him and Justice Winslow are kind of like, they have decent roles, but it, it doesn't seem like even at that price that they have the quite the upside to bump you up in a tournament, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you were speaking about minutes, which this is the minutes to win it, but I mean, <laughs> Winslow, Winslow is playing big minutes. I mean, 33, 33, 37, 35, 41, 36. I mean, yeah. Unbelievable. So, I mean, it's a nice matchup against Houston. He's going to get that role coming off the bench. Um, so I actually don't mind it tonight, especially if Houston maybe does go small. Um, I mean, that's something to, to look at because I mean, Winslow's kind of getting that 25 to 28 range lately. Yeah, yeah, no, he's definitely – I think he's a, a, a pretty safe cash option just because of those those minutes. It's like he's going to be out there. You're not going to be stressing out if he's like has a bad like first quarter or something yeah. because he's, he might not get the minutes. He's going to get the minutes either way. So um, solid, solid chance at that. I'm just a little skeptical in tournaments. 
Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't think the upside's there in tournaments. And obviously, if you're going to go a little bit balanced, you probably won't need him anyway. Right. Um, speaking of tournaments, I guess we can talk about Giannis here, Alphabet, mm-hmm. Greek Freak, whatever you want to call him. Um, I mean, the guy's been pretty good lately. Kind of had a down game against the Kings, which was disappointing. But um, nonetheless, I mean, averaging 17-6-2 and two over the last six games, these buck starters play huge minutes night in and night out. You can always count them for 35 plus. So um, even the 99 total tonight, I mean, the Milwaukee starters are the guys to target. They're always out there. And he is seemingly pretty random on when he has big games. So yeah. I think that big game upside is always there for him. Um, it's inconsistent. But, yeah, this is an interesting night to sort of grab him and, and hope for 40, 40 or 50 fantasy points on a random big night. Yeah, I mean, it's there. We've seen in the last 10. I mean, he's one for 56 against Atlanta, one for 46 against Washington. Um, I mean, he went for 44 against Orlando, 49 yeah. against Miami. So, I mean, yeah, the upside's definitely there. And, and it's seemingly there's no rhyme or reason, you know? So yeah. throw him in there tonight in your tournament lineups. So even though it is a tougher matchup for him, I mean, the guy's – his length can, can beat out defenders. Exactly. I mean, the guy kind of – nail it all down with his peripheral stats. Like, it's it's a trump card when you have that type of elite athleticism. So, yeah. like, even if the matchup is tough, he can still sort of dominate you in ways that the the team can't really necessarily control. Yeah. We were a power forward tonight. Uh, Larry Nance Jr., he's out until the All-Star break. Um, so that just means more Julius Randle. Um, really your only option from the Lakers tonight if I'm playing anyone. Um, just yeah. because, I mean, the guard situation's a little rough, and obviously we're not playing anyone down low outside of Randall. And he's he's been really consistent lately. Um, sometimes it takes weird twists and turns to get to value, but he's been he's been hitting that value and getting pretty much over 30 minutes every game for the last few games. So I think they're finally by, – Lord Byron is finally uh, moving over on Julius, and, and all we can hope for is that eventually he does the same thing with D'Angelo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, looking at Randall, he's like you said, he's averaging thirty minutes in the last six, averaging a double double in that span, mm-hmm. fourteen and eleven. Um, in two games against Minnesota, he's averaged seventeen and eleven. So, I do like him tonight. I like him in both formats just because he's still kind of priced a little bit cheaper um, right. than the other guys. So, um, I mean, his upside, it's it's rare at times, but I do think it is there in tonight's matchup. And and then the the Clint Capella Josh Smith sort of enigma that we're looking at here. It's kind of it's kind of tough to play either of them in this matchup, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean we were kind of debating does Josh Smith see more minutes? I think Clint Capella is a better player in my opinion, but mm-hmm. I mean obviously I'm not an NBA coach, and we've seen NBA coaches play the, the worst player in these times. So uh, it's it's a situation. I'm, I don't want to be a part of tonight. I, you have to be brave sometimes, and uh, if you want to throw Josh Smith in there, there is a chance he sees more minutes, but it, it's not a guarantee. Um, and it could be one of those nights where he goes one for seven and gets three fouls quickly. So um, it, it's a risk against a bad matchup. Yeah. Um, if you look at the top options from that same game, Chris Bosch is kind of your top option by default. Um, Kind of a nice, consistent cash game option. Yeah. Um, you know, he's averaged 21-6. He doesn't rebound a ton, um, but he just continues to shoot the ball well and um, but playing steady minutes. So I do like him for a safety option in cash games, but uh, I see myself paying down at, at power forward tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's kind of an interesting play. I think people are going to be all over sort of Houston in that game and Wade. Yeah. So Bosch might be a little under-owned. Um, he he's for balanced lineups though. He's he's an interesting option. Um, but yeah, mostly you're paying down. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking at tournament guys, Kristaps Porzingis, great matchup against Boston's front court, who mm-hmm. have struggled. The minutes have not been there of late. You kind of see him come down a little bit. Um, twenty and twenty four in the last games, uh, but then thirty one and thirty. So it's kind of up and down. Maybe after this kind of rest stretch. Um, I know he was dealing with an illness, but um, maybe he comes back and plays a little bit more minutes tonight. Great matchup. I mean, the guy has dominated Boston this season, averaging 21 and 9 uh, with 4.5 blocks and steals per game. So uh, the upside's there. He's kind of your better tournament play for, yeah, you know, compared to Bosch. 
Absolutely, and he's yeah, he's seven k less on on DraftKings, and he he's nine k or nine thousand nine hundred <laughs> nine hundred less, <laughs> not nine thousand. That would be if he was nine thousand less, he'd be an automatic play. Yeah, or Bosch Zingas, would just be out of the question. Porzingis is two thousand dollars <laughs> on FanDuel tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like you said, he does have that that upside, um, and he's played well against Boston this year. So, yeah, yeah. So I mean, starting with paying down, um, I love Jabari Parker tonight. Great matchup against Portland. Um, I mean, they rank in the bottom half for against power forwards and fantasy points allowed. Another guy who just plays big minutes. And if you're worried about the back to backs, I mean, Parker's averaged fourteen four and one. Um, and still shot 53% from the field on 11 games for back-to-backs this season. So I'm not too worried. And and if Jay Crowder doesn't play, are, are we looking at Amir Johnson here? I I haven't seen the splits of him. I mean, he's played more minutes last game when Crowder didn't. Um, but I think that was a matchup thing. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I still think he sits around that 25 to 28 minutes tonight. Um, and he's not a bad option. I mean, he's averaged 24 in two games against I, I think Par- Parker's the better option in that range, but I think Amir Johnson might be an interesting sort of yellow play if Crowder does not play. Definitely. I mean, we've seen kind of Johnson have 30, you know, fancy point upside. I mean, he put up 31 against Philly. Um, obviously, that's Philly. But I mean, <laughs> we've seen him have big games before, so. Mm-hmm. I actually don't mind him in tournaments. I think that's actually a good call there. Yeah. But if you're looking for a, a safer option um, with Hassan Whiteside ruled out, Amari Stoudemire has been extremely consistent um, coming off his best game of the stretch there, going 13 and 12 with three steals and a block. Only sees about 20 to 25 minutes a game, but really consistent averaging nine and eight, which is about 24 fantasy points per game in the last six. Yeah, he's one of those guys that he doesn't necessarily need the minutes to um, reach value. So, yeah, especially with Whiteside out, that's that's a really nice value. And, I mean, basically he's going to have the Houston front court to himself down there with no Howard. Right. So, um, right. you like him, and, you know, regardless of how Houston plays, I think Stoudemire is still going to be a lot for 20 to 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's pretty it. I mean, power forward's pretty scarce tonight. Um, you're, you're looking at Randall, Bosch, uh, Parker, and Stoudemire as your top cash game options. And then, as you mentioned, Amir Johnson um, and Porzingis is GPP guys. Yeah, the, the more you look over the slate, the more balanced lineups kind of appeal to you because it's, it's a little tougher to get that those really cheap plays tonight. Just because mm-hmm. it's a smaller slate, and it seems like a lot of these guys have either already broken out um, the Randalls and the Bookers and Goodwins of the world, and yeah. and they're just kind of, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you there, and there's not those Bryce DeGene Jones that we can right, exactly. that's kind of cheap. That's, that's what I mean. Like, Randall is still a good value at his price, but he's not the price that he was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Which would have been nicer. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at center tonight, uh, we've already mentioned it's on white side as the injury concern, but... It's all about the towns. Towns, towns, towns. <laughs> it's Just do it. Yeah, I mean, we should barely have to talk about them. Obviously, playing the Lakers front court, they've been awful against centers, and talents usage is up. I mean, he's averaging 22-11 and 11 over the last five games, and, I mean, the guy's just dominating. Automatic, and, I mean, especially on DraftKings, yeah. he's only 7,800. So, it's like, I don't, I don't see how you could fade him. He, he's – him or who's more unfadable, him or Harden, right now with price considered? Oh, I think it's Towns. It's yeah. as weird as that sounds to say without Harden playing yeah. or with, without uh, Howard tonight. I still think Towns is going to be in all my minds regardless. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I would suggest going 100% tonight. Barring an injury, he's just going to hit value. So, yeah, yeah in all, all formats, just throw him in there and start building after that salary's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's averaged he's averaged twenty three and thir- uh, twenty and thirteen in two games against LA. So he's already dominated them yeah. twice this season. Um if for some reason you're not going with him or you're trying to be different or as you mentioned, God help us if he gets injured, Greg Monroe. Oh. <laughs> um <laughs> I mean, Monroe's been really solid. He's coming off a monster game against Sacramento. Um, he was one of the few bucks to actually produce last night. And 
But, I mean, averaging 22 and 9 over the last six games, the mids have been up. And without John Henson, um, there's no real backup role to, to Monroe. Yeah, no, Monroe, Monroe's in play definitely on DraftKings. He, he's yeah. clearly, it's pretty much, as we just talked about town, so it's pretty much impossible to get him in on FanDuel tonight for me. But um, on DraftKings, yeah, he's another one of those 7K um, options that actually has a lot of upside. So, yeah. yeah I mean, I kind of like him. Like like you mentioned, he's not really a play for me on FanDuel. I think it's just Towns 100% there. But on DK where you can roster two centers and maybe go with a more balanced lineup, I kind of like Monroe and Towns. It's like a contrarian pivot from a lot of the other guys, especially with kind of some value guards out there. See, and if you put him in, I, I don't think it stops you from getting that third or fourth uh, 7K guy in there, you know? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, I, I think balance is a nice GPP move tonight. Definitely going to be contrarian. Yeah. Um, sticking with that Minnesota front court, um, Dang has just been phenomenal of late. The Gorge I Dang stack with Towns, it's just one. You really like him cash and tournaments tonight because of the upside. I mean, the duo has been really thriving yeah absolutely i i love both of those plays and i think they're pretty much uh, like all right guaranteeing <laughs> guaranteeing they have value tonight there you oh go. that's an easy there you guarantee. Go. there you go yeah. way, way to live life on the edge there yeah you know what i i take risks in life and uh, <laughs> this is one of them yeah i mean dang's been solid uh seeing bigger minutes with the vets kind of you know, injured on in Minnesota there. These these young guys have seen more minutes, and Dang's been one of them. Um, played 38 and 39 in the last two games, coming away with uh, three plus, 30 plus upside games. So um, I'm all over him again tonight. And, and Kevin Garnett is Kevin Garnett, so he's going to get minutes when he's back and, and be that veteran presence. But Dang is making a really good case for himself right now, it, not only tonight, but in the future, you know? Yeah. No, I've – I mean, I'm a big Celtics fan, so I've been kind of – like, I want the Celtics to trade for Dang somehow. Yeah. I want him on my team. Like, he's so good just defensively, offensively. He's been solid. So, mm-hmm. he's been a guy I've really wanted for a long time. Absolutely. Uh, um, Jonas, Valanciunas, uh against Phoenix. I mean, it's not really an option, but I don't know. I, I don't think Alex Leonard, Tyson Chandler are as good as we think they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of that matchup, I guess. No, I definitely agree with you there. I think it's a pretty pretty big contrarian move, though, cause, just because Dang's a little bit cheaper than him. But it's, I don't know, the mitts have been kind of inconsistent for me. Just there. say it. You don't like it. <laughs> I don't. I don't like just, it. You don't have to hedge. Just say, Rush, you're an idiot. And then when it goes for 40s tonight, I'm, I'm going to tweet you and I'm going to say, no, you're an idiot. <laughs> All right. So if if Alex goes off for forty plus tonight, I will do something on on tomorrow's podcast. Yes. All right. We'll figure it out. Damn. All right. That's gonna wrap things up here with the minutes to win it. Check out dailyfantasycafe.com for all our great tools and content.